Hello there, folks. Today we're going to take a look at the game called Raid on Takao. It's published by Miso Games and the designer is Ten Chek Ming. And in this game you are trying to survive. You have civilians trying to survive during the war. And you are trying to cooperate with each other. But you have your own fulfillments and regrets. And you kind of uh, go through this kind of struggle and depression of war. But this game is not as gruesome as it sounds. But still the theme is very serious. Let's take a look at how the game works. So Raid in Takao is a cooperative game where you're trying to survive the harsh conditions of war. And this is a scenario based cooperative game. So this game has quite a few scenarios in the box. But we're going to take a look at this um, first scenario over here, the Doomsday. And this is uh, not a difficult scenario. You have to collect those Bane cards and then you have to get rid of them eventually. We'll do that. We're going to we're gonna talk about the scenario in a moment. But in this game, you're gonna move around, you're gonna search for different items, and yeah, you are trying to meet the scenario's goal in trying to survive. You have your own character, and some of these components are in Chinese. So about that, I don't have a full English copy, but um, everything is downloadable, um, so you can, you can take a look at the um, internet and have English rules and uh, English boards, so you can print them out, basically, like print the play. But it, this game will be fully in English as well, it just... I had kind of a preview copy over here. So, and this game goes uh, through the different phases. There's the survival phase, the action, uh, sorry, the scenario phase, air raid phase, and consumption phase. And it's very easy to, to follow this one. So, for example, here you have your character, and it has those different stats over here. So, there's the uh, special ability, and also the stamina tokens which are the action points and then he has the kind of the mood or something like that the uh, i don't even psychological some, something psychological and then the health so basically if they meet each other then this character ha has died so this kind of a depression and this is health of course the war is a harsh thing yeah so now in in this particular scenario for example here the thing is that we're gonna draw those Bane cards and then we have to resolve them during the, the uh, scenario phase and these have some kind of conditions on them and if we fulfill them and at the end of the game if we, any of us, of, of the players that participate in this game have any of these Bane cards in front of them, then we win the game. So we will we will get them eventually, but then we have to get rid of them and fulfill conditions. So that's that. And this is the board where you have those different locations, yeah, those squares. Some of them has uh, bunkers, so you can hide in them to not to get hit by the aircraft. The, the bomber over here, he will move around here and bomb everything in the way, in this kind of a shape in the, the cross shape of form basically also here we have the item cards and we're gonna search around and do different stuff so but basically but what we can do so in this scenario we have to get those cards and they have to get rid of them so for example this one at the beginning of the phase the starting player has to draw a card and see what happens for example it says drink uh, the uh, this phase and these are different icons it's a bit difficult to see this consumption phase so during the consumption phase each time you use drain if you do not use drain ah, each, each time you use drain you go up in depression if you do not use drain during the consumption phase remove this card at the end of the phase yeah so basically you can re get rid of that if you don't use drain I'm gonna tell you what drain means. Drain means basically losing health in order to make yourself work up and get those action points uh, back. And so this card stays in front of you. You have to solve that card and the game begins and each phase begins, yeah? With, um, or to say round begins with survival phase, yeah? Here we have the survival phase where you can spend your action points. You have three action points and you have those different actions over here. So for example, this action says you can move three times. This action says you can move one and you can search one. This action says you can move one and repair two. Repair means if uh, you get ra if, if the city gets raided and these are the raid tokens that go down, so basically kind of buildings destroyed and so on, you can repair them. And it goes that way. So for example, if I wanna move one time and search one, 
I choose this action. This is basically like a little bit of like a gimmick that you move those action points down, but you can use the same actions as many times as you want. So for example, I will move maybe here and then I will also search and I could search first and then move. But yeah, it's so there, there will be a certain amount of cards laid down on each space like something like that, based on the number of players. I didn't do that in the setup, I'm sorry about that. But basically, a certain amount of cards is in each space, and then you move to that space and you draw a card from that space, and then you get something, yeah? For example, in this one, uh, we're gonna get a shovel, which is a gear, and it gives us plus one to repair. And you put it down over here, you have only one spot for the gear, and then you have some spots for the items and the food. So basically you can do search and you can repair. I'm going to show you how the raid goes and then how to repair all the things. But um, in this one, if it's out of the cards, then you cannot search there anymore. But yeah, as I told you, um, no, I'm sorry, I did, didn't put them in the right uh, spots. But you can see these are the search uh, spots over here. So if I would be like, say, over here, I would search, for example. Yeah, and you can you have to put a certain amount of cards there. Also, there's the mountains. So if you move onto the mountains, you have to use two movement points in order to move. If you move out, only one. And also what you can use, you can use rails in order to move. So I can move from here right over here to the ends if I use the railway station. But if there is a rail token on any of the spaces that uh, cross this uh, rail, or the, that the rail crosses, then I cannot use the railways anymore. And same with the port, so you can use the C port in order to move from that space all the way to that space over here. So this is how the search goes and then you grab all these different cards. Let's just take a look at these cards. Uh, so for example, if you have this card over here, this is three food. And this one shows how many players uh, should you have in order to have this card in the deck. And there's the animal carcass, uh, but if you eat the rotten animals, then you get depression up. And these are the different items. For example, you may place this card under a rotten food or animal carcass to ignore the negative effect of those cards and gain one additional food. So basically, when you get those cards, you put the food tokens on them. And then you can spend those food tokens during the consumption phase in order to, to, to get your stamina back. Uh, so you have to eat. And as I told you, um, in this one, for example, it, you can also spend health instead of food. If you don't have enough food, you can spend health in order to uh, get uh, your stamina back. But it's called drain, and that's the bulimia. That's the that's the card over here. So if we will not use drain, then we get rid of that card. So that's that. So that's how you do those different actions. How do you repair? So basic repair means if if there are ray tokens over here, then uh, you can repair anything in adjacent spots or in the same spot. You, you can be in the same spot if you're rated, but you cannot move onto the spots which are rated. So which means this, this spot here is destroyed. If I want to move there, I cannot. But if I was there and I was and there was the airstrike, and I was there, so I can stay there, but I cannot move into the other space, which is raided. I have to get rid of that first. So, so you can repair the adjacent stuff or the, the same allocation stuff. You can repair those, so you basically get rid of those. And those different bunkers, they, they are a safe place from the airstrike. But if this uh, bunker is struck two times, then this bunker is no longer functioning. And yeah, it's basically a bland spot over here. So that's that. And you can only have one raid token per location anyway. So basically the survival phase means that you do these different actions in turns. And sometimes you have those um, special uh, religious places and it says, what's your color over here? Your religious space is the white religious space. So if I would end my turn over there, I would get my depression back down which means I, I kind of prayed and then I got more positive over here so that's that and after the survival phase we have the scenario phase uh, that's where usually those different cards so there are different scenarios over here so for example this card works only at the end of the round 
but um, many of the cards they work during the scenario phase, the scenario cards themselves, and you kind of resolve them during scenario phase. And then there's the air raid phase. So the air raid phase goes like that. So you will roll the die, and then it says three over here, so I have to move that over here three times, yeah? So I move it one, two, and then it goes like that over here, three. Which means that it will strike all this, all of these over here. So the column, the whole column will be bombed. And if somebody's in the way over here of the strike, that person loses two health and adds one depression, which is really bad. So that's that. That's how the raids phase goes. And then eventually you have the consumption phase. And as I told you, you have to eat or drain yourself in order to get your action points back that you spent. You don't have to spend all your action points doing a round, but it's really good to spend these. And here we have the different characters as well and different boards for scenarios. They're sadly in Chinese, but there are quite a few different approaches to the uh, scenarios over here. So there's quite a lot of replay value over here. And those different characters as well, as you can see over here. And one more thing, so there are some, um, <clears throat> for example, there is the animal friends as well in the deck. These animals can do extra action over here, so maybe I'll find one, like for example this one. He will give you kind of some kind of extra ability. You can, by the way, uh, eat that animal, basically move, <laughs> making them, uh, him into course, but it will uh, get your depression up. But yeah, they, they will give you some special abilities, they walk with you and they give you special abilities so you can have one animal friend as well in front of you. But basically one more thing that's going on with, with all of these over here are those uh, um, fulfillment cards basically. And this is the priest over here, this is the same character, he's fulfillment cards and that means that it says like during that particular phase if you use rain while being alone achieve fulfillment otherwise you get depression up so you have to achieve those different fulfillments in order to not lose any uh, stamina or not lose any health or, or not add any depression but when you fulfill those cards you can for example if you fulfill that card you will move you will put it like that and then you will st stuck it underneath your character board and it will give you plus one to a search action for example over here you can also do a regret so family you will not fulfill this card during this round you can regret instead thus doing whatever the regret says you may instead like for example add to depression and chief regret and then you will put it that way and there's some kind of a text and also the same plus one to the search and then you can move to the next one. So you have to do them in order level one, level two, level three. So you will try to do those fulfillments in order to get some extra actions over here. And every character has those. And eventually you have to survive the scenario and see if you win. And if you win, then you're lucky. If not, try again. And that's how you play Raid on Dakar. First of all, components and artwork. Um, so this artwork is kind of a, a niche. I mean, you might like it, might not. It's kind of a, this Asian style artwork on there, but it's colorful, it's uh, beautifully drawn, uh, drawn, and it, the, the board is beautifully drawn, though it has those squares, which I don't really like on that board. I sh would love to have those kind of a more shaped territories or something like that, but it's minor thing, it's, it's my thing over here. If we go into the components, um, the rule book is, I would say surprisingly good. I mean, it's 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 not as amazing. It has some questions about where did you put anything in the rule book. I mean, like that rule should be maybe there or there. But I mean, the rule book is well done for what it is, and it's not a hard game to learn. If we go into the components themselves, so basically what we have there is that we have those those really cool bombers, which are the metal tokens. I love them. Uh, everything looks nice and stylish. The problem I have is the problem with the tokens. Uh, the tokens are, I don't know how they're cut, but they're rounded on one side and like they're plain on the other side or like, 
Uh, and the thing is that when you're trying to grab those tokens, it's really hard to grab them from the table. And those full tokens are really small, it's especially hard to grab them. Uh, that's, that's just annoying. It's a minor thing, it's just about the grabbing components, but, but still. Um, overall, everything else is done nicely. I mean, those fulfilling cards, on one hand, they have the picture of the character, on the other hand, uh, on the other side, they have just information. They're not as beautiful, but I mean, it's, that's extremely minor things. So, overall, the components are nice, some minor uh, things about, you know, the cut of the uh, tokens, the cardboard tokens, and maybe the board should have been a little bit more beautiful, but nice production. So, I give components artwork 4 out of 5. If we go into the theme, so... This game is about survival. Um, this game feels like survival. You're trying to survive. You, you, you look at your health points and you look at your depression going up or down and you're trying to survive and you feel that. You feel like when you're searching for the food, you want to eat, uh, you're cooperating with each other. Uh, but on the other hand, it doesn't feel extremely thematic, you know, like Robinson Crusoe or like Nemesis, for example, it's a cooperative game. So, or the winter and so on. So it, it doesn't have kind of a, that kind of a strong theme to it. Because you, in this one, you go to these different locations. So there's, it's rather simple type of actions. You move around, you do your own thing, and you search and you get those cards. And it just doesn't feel like a, you know, a, a great theme over there. But you still, still you feel the struggle of, of kind of a war and the artwork and kind of a, the, the flavor gives it. Uh, to you, so there is that theme of war and struggle, but not as strong as I would have liked to, uh, would love to have it. So I give theme 3 out of 5. If we go into the mechanics, the main thing about the game, so this is a cooperative game, as I told you, you basically you move around, uh, you collect the stuff, you, you search for different things and you try not to get in the way of bombers. So you can survive because if one of the players is dead, then everyone has failed. So, and those there are different scenarios which give you different fulfillments. But eventually, in the core, at the core of the game, you just move and you search. And of course, you're trying to fulfill different stuff, but the stuff is kind of concentrated on, like I have to be in that location, and I have to do that action that I would do probably anyway or I have to be in that location and do that action there it kind of circles around the same narrow action selection so in this one what I feel what, what lacks is that there's not enough different cool actions that you could do yeah you can do your special abilities and all that but you basically you can move you can search you can repair repair extremely easy search is extremely easy and move is extremely easy I would have loved to have a little bit more meat to the bone, you know. Uh, I would have loved more different actions, something extra, something spicy that you could do at crucial times, you know. And it doesn't come out in this game. And yes, there's a cool system of action points and then you have to eat or, or drain your um, health in order to get your stamina back so you can do those actions again, which is a very nice thing in this game, but overall. The other thing, cooperation. Though it's a cooperative game and you try to survive together and you kind of help each other. Sometimes you like, if you're on the same location, you can uh, share things with each other. Yeah, it's like a free action. And uh, that's cool. You give food to the other player or you give them the, um, uh, the medicine or you, or you heal them. It's kind of... But it feels kind of you are just trying to survive yourself. I mean, like, if, if one player is killed, you all die, which means that... Uh, if, if you see kind of like uh, he and her uh, kind of dying, then you, you have to go there, you have to give them food or, or medicine or something like that. It kind of feels like another goal to achieve uh, that is created during the game, like the minor goal. Which doesn't feel as exciting maybe in the cooperation itself, because overly what you do, you, for example, in the first area, yeah, you get your Bane cards and this is your thing to do. Uh, you get uh, your own fulfillment cards. It's your own thing to do. It, there are some characters, by the way, which this is, this is nice. There are some characters that in, interact with each other. Like, for example, if like that character is uh, next to me, then that character fulfills its uh, special condition, something like that. Some of that. Some, there, there, there are some relations between those characters which add to the theme, which add to the mechanics, which I like. 
but overall it still feels like a solitaire multiplayer cooperation because there's not much to cooperate on the game itself is rather simple and yeah i just i just felt like i wanted to have more meat on the bone i wanted to have more different actions i wanted to have kind of a, a more uh, it's not, not not more difficult but from the the ai let's say uh or is it ai I, 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 yes, basically, the, 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 the game plays against you, kind of, with those bombers, yeah, I, I would, have, would have loved it to be more chaotic, maybe, more against you, there's a roll of a die, but it's like, you roll the die, it's, it's one, two, or three, so the, the, the bomber moves one, two, or three, so I would just love to have a meteor game, because this game is big on the table, has quite a few moving parts, tokens, but in, in its core it's a little bit too simple. But it's a next step from the Raid on Daihoku and I, I rated Raid on Daihoku lower, this one I like more. So I give mechanics 3 out of 5. You're going to do replayability. So first of all, the, the good thing and the bad thing at the same time. So the good thing is this game has different scenarios which have very many different you know approaches to the game so you can do quite a few different games and you know you the animals you have to rescue the animals you have to rescue the people and then you have to collect those bane cards you know and get rid of them quite a few different things you can do in each game which is really cool which adds a lot to the replayability i love that but on the other hand it's a scenario based game which means that after you have achieved the scenario you have won the scenario in this game particularly, for example, like in Robinson Crusoe, I, I could play the, the scenario again, if, 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 even if I won that, because this game has more meat on the bone, it has more actions, more different things you can do, and more approaches. But in this one, um, but this, this is the common thing for the scenario-based games, it's still, it's the same scenario, so if, if you have achieved this scenario, if you have won this scenario, then that's it, you know, it's it's not as exciting to play the scenario again. So if you're smart enough to, to win those scenarios rather quickly, like on the second trial, or the third trial, or on the first trial already, then the replay value goes down quite a bit for you. So the replayability is kind of good, kind of not, but you can play those different characters as well. So you can try this character, and then this character, and this character. They are not extremely different. They are not asymmetric. They're... they're just small things like this one can pray in this one in this color this one can pray this color and this they have the special abilities are also some of them are more exciting than the other ones and you know it's but it still has to replayability so overall i give replayability uh, 3 uh 3.5 out of 5 and then we go to the scale um as i told you this game feels as a solitaire multiplayer cooperation which means that it can scale well with different number of players. I mean, I'm sure that it's uh, it's kind of a better to play with more players. There will be more interaction between the players, uh, and you will kind of uh, you know you can share the stuff with each other. It adds to the game overly. But if you play with only two players, you can talk to each other directly, and so it's also a nice experience. So I, I don't see a big um, difference or, or I don't see that maybe two places is a bit too less or uh, but I, I kind of feel like this game varies well with different number of players so I give the scale um, four out of five so basically one point from you know it's still better to play with more players so and the uh, overall rating and I didn't sum it up let me just see for a moment 18 out of 25 and this means that this game gets a bronze Würfel medal as I told you um, this game is a step up from the Raiden Taihoku which is uh, the first thing uh, the first game in that line Raiden Takao is a next step it still lacks more meat but it's it's a nice experience of a cooperative game. I would recommend to try it. You know, it's it's a different theme, it's a different art, it's it's a little bit different approach with those fulfillment cards. It's it's rather nice. 
to have the kind of a mechanic over there and uh, different scenarios that you can explore and see if you can get used to them and you can win them um, rather sooner than later. So it's it's a nice game. It's just not one of the best you know cooperative games out there. So and that's it for this review and if you didn't forget you can always subscribe to the channel you can take a look at the facebook page the instagram the twitter subscribe to all of these i post um, some of the you know news and the news about the new reviews and uh, we have the f uh, we have the um, ruffle cast as well with kyle wood and it's really nice we discuss the games we do some mini games our ourselves and then we discuss the topic of the day usually we do some top tens and so on and also I put the pictures on the Instagram and on Twitter as well and Facebook as well so where I say that I have played such and such games so you can ask me about if I liked it or not or whatever you can shout out your own opinion about that game so I can read that and it will be really cool to start a discussion so all of that but anyway thank you for watching and we we'll see you another time bye bye this channel is sponsored by Osprey Games check them out at ospreypublishing.com